I love to hear Uncle George uh, say the affirmation. He's, <laughs> he says it with such conviction. And I, that just does my heart good when he does that. I thank God for being here today. Uh, it's so good to see each one of you. And we are just grateful for how God continues to do what he does. Uh, the songwriter says that he's in the blessing business. Yeah, I, I don't know about you, but he's blessing me right now. And so I'm so grateful for his continued blessings. I'm so grateful for the fellowship that we have one with the other and that you chose to assemble yourselves here today to hear a word from the Lord. So without further ado, say amen for Pastor Bland. Good morning. If you will, get your Bibles and let's turn, if you will, to Luke, the, four, the fourth chapter. I want to say, God bless you, good to, good to see you back, um, that if there ever was a time that we needed good teaching, Nisha, this is the time now. Um, so much of what I labored up under when my children were small, Fred, coming up in this community, were them being exposed to other children whose parents hadn't taught them anything. Uh, you know that when you have children, uh, it comes to a point where people outside of the house, uh, Fred, have more influence over your children than you have on them. So then there was a constant battle um, to try to negate the teaching that they were getting outside of the house. Um, the Bible says to raise up a child in the way he should go. And, and when he's old, he shall not, he, he, how does it go? Help me now. He will not depart. Uh, he will return. So then uh, when I look at Manassas Christian Fellowship, we're almost coming up on 16 years, you have to assess your labor, whether that you're running in vain. Uh, actually, you guys get to be my family. Uh, I look back at pictures, I look back at videos. Uh, I was looking at one uh, from six years ago, Harley, and you wasn't no bigger than that. Just, just a look here. You look about the same, but you just was little. Uh, and so many more, I've seen children that have just grown up and now they are grown. And so then we become family. Uh, and I have an obligation, if you're a parent and you're not trying to teach your children nothing, I don't care what you buy them. You can buy them all kind of Jordans, you can put all kind of car clothes on them, but if you don't put, uh, say man for Brother Spans to come, uh, if you don't put anything in that child, to help them to make it through this world. Because look at your neighbor and tell them, say, you don't know what you think you know. You, you don't know what you think you know. You see, the Bible says that knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. You see, it also says that God is love. And if you're not walking in love, then it'll make no difference what kind of car you get. How many people are patting you on your back? What kind of title that you have? Because there's nothing that is given in this world that cannot and will not be taken away. <laughs> I've never seen a hearse that left here with all your possessions. Now they try to talk about they're getting ready to, they're going to they gonna bury you with all them gold rings and everything. But I want you to know that you can go dig them back up. Them rings ain't there. You can go dig them up. And so then I, I understand today that the Bible says that God honors humility. God honors, uh, he gives grace to the humble. There is no problem that God can't give you the victory over. Whether it's drug addiction or whether it's some type of habit or some type of harmful uh, practice that you have in your life. God can give you victory over that where you don't even care about it anymore. God, God, can, be, God can make it where that, that's the same to you as something that, that, that you have no love for 
and he does that through something that's called grace. Why is grace so important? Grace is so important because grace originates and consummates in God. That's when God does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. I found, Brother Robert, that God is a God that will place us in a position where self won't help us. And he does that simply uh, to, in order to effectuate his power through us. Put that another way, Pastor. What I'm saying is, as long as I have power, as long as I can do, I don't need you to do. Oh, y'all looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, let a Negro that ain't never had and doesn't get two or three knuckles. You look at him, you don't know. My wife told me, boy, I'm telling you what. My wife told me, she said, Vanna, I didn't know who you was. I didn't know who you was. Uh-uh. I had something in me, I told somebody, I was looking, I got enough money to burn up a wet mule. Thank you, Jack. I'm gonna tell you something, money is intoxicating. You, you don't know what I'm talking about, you must still be broke. Money is intoxicating. Some things that the Bible says, this was Captain Jacob said, money answer of all things. It's some things you don't have to worry about if you got a little money, come on, y'all. And so that's the reason that it's so hard, Lady Deborah, for folk that got to humble themselves up under the mighty hand of God. But what I love about God is, is that God will kick that walking stick with him up under you. The very thing that had you propped up, uh, God, God will kick it away. And he does it not because he's trying to destroy you. God don't have to destroy none of us. We do a good enough job with that ourselves. God don't have to, he don't have to set no traps for us or nothing like that. We go out and get our own switch. Uh-huh. I want to talk this morning. Uh, look at your neighbor, look him right there in the eye, and tell him this right here, and say, what you know won't help you. What you know won't help you. You see, Cricket, I, I said, God, why are we coming out here? What, what is it? God said the purpose is, is for you to become spiritual. I said, well, God, what is spiritual? He said, spiritual is when you are led by me by my spirit, that I direct what you do. I take your path. I, 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 I move you. I am the, the driving force in, in you. When you are spiritual, you are led by the spirit and not by yourself. And the thing about it is, is that as wonderful as you think you are, what you know won't help you. Okay, make that plain, Pastor Bland. Have you ever found yourself in a bad place and you was doing the best thinking that you could? Have you ever sat down and said, I never thought I would end up where I am? And you see, Sister Kathy Jacobs, the problem, I like the big picture. I like to be a, once you get the big picture, then you can see, but sometimes you can't see the trees for the fourth. You just all caught up in, in your little everyday fights and, 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 and every one of us that's in here right now, we got enough depression to go in and get, jump off the bridge. We got enough stuff that's going wrong. We got, we got folks that, 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 that are laid traps for us. We don't have folks that are misused us. I'm talking about for other folks now. I ain't talking about us because it don't bother us what we done. Thank you, Jesus. We ain't lose no sleep by what we done done to other folk. But, but, but what folk done done to us, we, look like we just can't get over. I'm talking about something happened 40 years ago. So, the problem is, is us leaning to our own understanding. You see, God can't lead me until I turn my back on me. And that's the whole purpose of the cross. The cross is, it's when I do not value anything that's in me anymore. <laughs> I don't value that no more. Okay, give me, give, me, give me Philippians, the third chapter. I was going to Luke 4, but give me Philippians, the third chapter. What I know won't help me. Robert, when I found myself, I just, January the 7th, y'all, I celebrated 32 years of being drug and alcohol free. I turned around very magnanimously on that morning, Fred, and looked at my wife, and I stuck my chest out, and I told her, I said, you know what, baby? This is what, I have my best Barry, voice, Barry White voice. I said, I'm very grateful 
and that I've been sober for 32 years. I'm very thankful for it. And as usual, if you got a good wife, she'll burst your bubble. She told me, she said, you don't know thankful. <laughs> oh, I thought this was about me. She said, y'all, you don't know thankful. She said, I, I, I was a woman that was broke and going to work every day, trying to work a job. I had two small children. She said, I'll run up out of here. <laughs> and then I loved the, the love of my life, the man I gave up everybody else for them, the man that, that my turned against my mama for, the man that I say I had to have, the, the man that I placed all my hope and, and my love in was hooked to crack cocaine and couldn't help me a bit. And everybody was telling me oh, well, I was a fool, but I, you don't know grateful. You don't know thankful. You don't, you don't know thankful. And so this morning, I come to recharge and to re-energize because uh, we live in a time, y'all, when depression is trying to take all of us out. And I didn't come to church to be depressed. I, I, I was depressed before I got here, and I don't want to be depressed when I leave, but I need to hear a word, God. And the word this morning is, what I know won't help me so that I got to look somewhere else besides within myself because... It's a different thing when you Harry Hippie. Your Harry Hippie ain't trying to do nothing. But when you're doing the best you can, but seem like things don't get no better, when you're doing the best you can, when you've got the things that you work for and everything, you got the car you wanted, you got the money you got, you got the woman that you wanted, but you're still sitting up there miserable, twiddling your thumb, trying to figure out, is this all that it is? What you know what helped you? See, this whole thing started in Genesis 3 when God was taking care of mankind. Man had no problems. Uh, and the thing about it is, is that as a man, and I'm very hard on men, uh, I had a bunch of men, but the women didn't stand by the men. And the thing about a man is, is that until he get to a certain place, he weak for a woman. I say that again. I don't care who don't like it. Chew on it or choke. I ain't preaching for money, for fame, or if you like me or nothing. <laughs> a man have to get to a certain position when he's not ruled and regulated by a woman. What you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is, is that God made a man head. He made a man head. Whatever it is where you thought you tricked that woman, you didn't trick her, baby. You, you didn't trick her. I got about two or three women that are going to pull your coats and all, baby. You playing checkers. I was playing chess. I was already down the road. I already had figured out when I saw you, I knew what I was going to do with you. And you just fell right on in line and whatever. Well, we were watching Hollow Nights the other night, and the woman told him, said, I've been holding back, but I just, when she left, he got on the phone and said, baby, she, well, I don't know if her name was Maria or whatever. She said, Maria, I, I ain't coming back home. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Take care of yourself. <laughs> you see, the Bible says that Adam wasn't deceived. The woman was deceived. You see, the woman, I don't care how slick she is, she's still the weaker vessel. God placed you there in order to steady the ship. God placed you there in order to stay the course. And that's, see, that ain't nothing like a woman that's got a real man. See, see, the thing that people didn't understand with Lady Deborah was is that Lady Deborah was able to see past where I was. And she was saying, God, I know you told me this is my man right here. And this man here is going to be somebody one day. But I got to go through in order to get to get to it. That, that was not a sense knowledge. You see, Fred. <laughs> there is a knowledge that comes from our five senses, what we see, what we hear, what we smell. Uh, but there's another knowledge that comes from God. Uh, the Greek called it Ouida, O-U-I-D-A, which was different from the Gnostic or uh, the Gnosky knowledge. This Gnosky knowledge was a knowledge that you learned like you have experience on a job and you now you know the job. But the Weeda is a uh, intuitive knowledge. You ever just, think, just knew something and said, I don't know how I know. I, I don't know how. 
that I know. You see, the Spirit of God will give you the things of God's Spirit and will deposit in you because now that you have been baptized into the body of Christ, he has become our wisdom, our righteousness, our justification. It's no longer me, but it's Christ that dwells within me. Man had no problems, but the lady was approached by a walking snake. Now, the reason I know the snake was walking because afterwards God cursed him and told him, said, from the rest of your days shall you crawl on your belly and eat the dust. So he must have been walking beforehand. Uh, the, the, the Hebrew word is nekash, which when you do research, you will find out that it means shining. It, it, it means something that will bewitch you. You see, Satan is going to bring you something that make you go, wow. Satan is going to make you, like that, that you just turn. Why do you think that, do, do, do you think that all them lights and bells and whistles got anything to do with you winning money over at the casino? It's to fascinate you. It's to fascinate your senses. You have to turn off the wisdom that God has given you and become fascinated. Okay, let me see if I get it. I'm going to talk to the men right now. Have you ever been walking along thinking about Jesus? <laughs> and you, you, I know this is not correct English, but I got to talk. I, you've seen something. That, that Jesus left your mind, your wife left your mind, and all kind of things. And your head got on a swivel. <laughs> but as soon as you got maybe about 10 or 15 feet away from it, you come back to yourself. It didn't mean, it, it didn't mean a thing. And so he comes to her and he tells her, Brother Hughes, he tells her, he says, if you eat of this, then you will know the difference between right and wrong. Look at somebody, I have to keep reinforcing. Look at them and tell them, say, what you know won't help you. <laughs> when you eat of this, then you will know. <laughs> now, what I never understood about this, what was the harm of this? But the harm of it was, is that now that you know, you don't need to consult me anymore. You, you know what you're supposed to do. You know where you're supposed to go. You, knew how, you know now how to direct and comport your life. Uh, the Bible said there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The Bible says that in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. God will lead us, Sister Kathy Jacobs, in the paths of righteousness. He will lead us into a life that's abundant. And our best thinking will lead us into a dope house. Will lead us into the wrong place. Look what Paul says here in Philippians, the third chapter. He says, brethren, uh, Philippians 3, I'm, I'm going to find it in my Bible. Good. We'll go a little further. I've already made my point. Y'all got it, nature. You got it. Philippians, the third chapter. Let me find it in my Bible where I can read it here. Here's the Bible. Paul says, finally, my brethren, re rejoice in the Lord. Uh, to write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Do you know it take a backbone to stand up for the truth? Uh, sometimes I scare. Let me tell y'all something, Pastor Bland. Have I have paid a price for the life that I live? I have paid a price for standing up and for saying what well, you ain't hear no whole lot of folks say what I said. Do you, do you think folk like it? <laughs> you see? But, but the thing about it is, is that uh, Peter stood up, I think it was Acts the fourth chapter, and the people threatened them. So, well, you know, they had whooped them, and they threatened them, and talked about what they was going to do to them. 
and everything. But you know what? Peter had already gone through that thing where he was afraid. Remember when he warmed himself and the folks threatened him? You see, people try to rule you and control you with fear. With fear. And they tell you that you can't do nothing until they say you, they can do it. Who told you? Who authorized you? Who told you to set that church up? Who is it up under? Who, 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 who is it? But I heard Jesus says, upon this rock, I'll build my church. I, I got tired of going to y'all church. I got tired of he listening to y'all sermons. I got tired of hearing the same old emotional foolishness and whatever. I know how to do without. I'll wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait on God. The Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You see, Brother Jeff, I do not bother anybody about them following me or going where I'm going because uh, Jesus told them uh, it was the sons of Zebedee that you know what? People like notoriety and see the devil works on you uh, with your need for notoriety and, and your need to try to meet your needs. Uh, and so G, the sons of Zebedee, their mama come to him and say, suffer my sons uh, to sit on your right and your left hand when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, well, it's not given unto me to give it, but only my father. He said, but can you stand to be baptized? Which, let me tell you something. Uh, they tried to teach us a whole thing and a lot of things in law school, but baby, you didn't learn how to practice law till you got in the courtroom. Uh, they tried to teach y'all a lot of things about teaching, Zander Junior, but you don't know how to teach uh, until you get about four or five of these nappy head children in front, until you get one that challenge you in front of all the rest of the students uh, and say, do you have the right to teach? That's when you learn how to teach your people upon the ground Jesus asked them yeah, yeah, can you stand to be baptized with the baptism that I'm, I'm I got a baptism of fire that's coming up I got a baptism that comes down to will I save myself or will I stand for God what you know won't help you. What I found out, Deacon Brimley, is, is that I have to do something that's called set aside. I have to set aside all that I think I know in order for God to teach me. Make that, make that practical for me, Pastor. I could not figure out how it was that folks that had never been to college <laughs> folks that were breaking verbs and folks that, that, that didn't know about Omega Sci-Fi and all that. Folks, folks that, that, that had never received a grief. Folks that wasn't raised in households that had parents that had masters. I could not understand how these ignorant folk <laughs> could get off cocaine, but me with my smart self, me with my wonderful self, I kept going back doing the same thing over what you know huh, won't help you. Look at somebody and tell them, I need the Lord's help. That's how come I'm here this morning. Please, please understand. Don't get caught up in my clothes. Please, don't get caught up in where my church man. That's the first thing they want to ask you. Well, where you go to church at? Oh, you at Bland's church, huh? You need to tell them, baby, I don't care if he was a duck or a monkey. I need God's help. I need the Lord to help me to walk this tedious journey because when I find out that my grandbaby's heart is not beating properly, when I find out uh, that they lay traps on my job and because they realize that I just I just went in debt. You know that's what they do, don't you? When they find out you done bought a new house, then all of a sudden your work performers come in question. The devil is out to rob you of your identity. And that's the reason that God tells us to take our identity to the cross. 
Because there's none of us <laughs> that's flawless or, per or, or, or perfect. Or, there's none of us uh, that can stand up to the magnifying glass and, and stand up. But when, <laughs> when I'm in Christ, <laughs> When I'm in Christ, then, Brother Span, I'm without a spot, a wrinkle, or any, any such thing. And so she sold us out. Well, no, she didn't. He sold us out. I got you in Philippians 3, right? Go to Romans 5 and 12. But you know, it won't help you. You see, I got to let God walk in me. And with God walking in me, I got love walking in me. Mm -hmm. I had some folks that have done me real dirty lately and everything. But you know what, Sister Kathy Jacobs? The Lord told me to pray for them. The Lord said, when you pray, pray they have everything that you desire in your life. So pray that the children be blessed. Pray that if ah, glory to God. You're not going to control me. I'm not coming to church for nothing. And I, and I appreciate y'all. You know what the thought that came to me this morning. Let me tell y'all something. I make you this promise. This is a personal promise from pastor. And when I speak for pastor, I speak for Lady Deborah too. Because I, I ain't never seen. Ain't, ain't nobody. Lord have mercy Jesus. That woman loved me. <laughs> if she left, look, Lord, come down here with y'all with me. <laughs> This is my promise to y'all. As long as you show up, I'll show up. Don't worry about who don't come. This is my promise. Hey, glory, I'm on my way home, y'all. I'm on my way home. You family, I'm hurt. I'm hurt that Gene don't sit there no more. I'm hurt that Brother Davis don't sit there. I'm, I'm hurt, y'all. I'm not a hireling. Everything I got, and if that, when I say me, I'm talking about my wife too. Everything we got is in this right here. I don't care what they say. I'm not here for, for money. I'm not here to please nobody. I'm here because God chose me. And I do not resist him. I thank him. I call it an honor. I call it a privilege. Because you know what? <laughs> we need, we, we need, we, we need the every. Every hour. Thank you, Vandal. You see, Jeff, there's a few of us that we came to a place like the old Baptist deacon. Oh, these knees ain't what they used to be. When the deacon got down on his knees and he said, Lord, he said, if thou withdraw, y'all don't know what I'm saying. If thou withdraw thyself from me, whither shall I go? Uh, some of us have come to the place where we couldn't go no further. We couldn't go no further. Money wouldn't satisfy us. Uh, women, men wouldn't satisfy us. Positions and title wouldn't satisfy us. Uh, we was full of this world. We had everything that we thought that we wanted. But yet there was an emptiness in our soul and life wasn't what we knew that it could be. And at that time, friend, we called on him. You see, David put it like this. He said, this poor man, this poor man, this poor, see, so it's got to get personal, Cricket. I, this poor man cried. <laughs> And he, God lifted him out of the muck and the mire. No wonder it was that Dr. Watts pinned him that said, long as I live. I got a witness? I got a witness? Long as I live, the trouble right. I'll hasten. I'll hasten to his throne. I'm not going to tell you I don't have trouble this morning. I'm hurt this morning because my brother... Well, the way he laced it, he was laid flat on his back for the last two weeks fighting for his life. I'm hurt! I don't like it. I'm past the point where I don't care about what happened to nobody but myself. I'm past that. 
but I'm trusting. I'm trusting in God. I'm trusting in God. I remember there was a brother named Ray who I really didn't have that much to do with, didn't know him, that, but I saw him years ago and I said, Ray, how you doing? He said, well, Vandal, I got, Vandal, I got diagnosed with cancer. And he said, it looks like that it's going to take me out. I did notice at that time I looked at his skin and his skin had turned just a pale. He was a dark brother, but he had turned almost just pale. I said, well, it was bad. When I went to visit him at the hospital, he would only let certain people visit him. He had a certain group. And don't, look, don't think strange to him. Jesus, when he was really about business, he only let his inner circle in. He said, the rest of you boys, y'all wait outside, Peter, James, and John. Come on, come on in here with me. You're not supposed to be with everybody. There's some people that have to sit in the orchestra, but you got some folks that sit right down front. You need to identify who your circle is because you are a person of purpose. You was not put here just to cook flapjacks and fight. And I went in there and they would only let him have a sliver of ice. That's all the water that he could have and he was leaving here and I asked him on that day that he told me he had cancer I said well Ray what you gonna do now and I'll never forget Ray said now I don't know nothing else was said that day or that week that year but he told me that day I said what you gonna do Ray he said well man I'm gonna keep trusting in the same God that brought me to where I am now I feel satisfied in my heart that Gene and Mr. Davis, that every time I took the mic, that every time I stood before them, I preached and I taught my heart out. I feel satisfied that I never got up here talking about tithes and offerings and raising money. I feel satisfied that I never got up here and get to talking about what nobody was doing to me and why y'all ain't acting right or nothing. I feel satisfied, Sister Kathy Jacobs, that when I took the mic, I taught the word of God. I stripped the inner man where they would be able to fight the good fight. That's what Paul says. Every one of us come to our end. It's not what God planned for us, but that's what happened when we decided we wanted to know something. Uh, Philippians, the third chapter. Only got like, what, eight minutes. What did I tell you then? Romans 5. Romans 5 and 12. You got it? Here the Bible says, wherefore as one by, by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And the only way sin got in was because we was trying to know something. We was trying to know something. That's the reason that you only get wise when you say, Lord, you teach me. And that's the reason I just, I can't find it within myself to get out on my knees asking God for nothing. And I get out on my knees praying to my Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. Lord, give me that. No, when I pray, I pray only for knowledge of the will and the power to carry it out. You see, I don't, I, I don't know what's best for me. Uh, Romans 8. Give me Romans 8, maybe about 18, something like that. I've lately I've had people that's on the internet that tell me they said, Pastor, I appreciate the fact that you don't just tell us something, but you give us the scripture to go to go with it. Because people haven't been taught, y'all. I wasn't. They ain't taught me. They was trying to get me to do what they wanted me to do. I'm so glad to be free from them. I don't miss them. I don't. You don't you don't get to misuse me no no more. You don't you don't you don't get to me. I don't I'm not that needy. I don't need your your affirmation. I don't need I'm already approved. The Bible tells me that before the foundation of the world, God chose us in Christ Jesus. That means before I ever get all this, all this old low self-esteem that I've carried all my life, that was a result of me placing what you said above what God said. 
Today, Paul says, then they criticized Paul because he wasn't one of the 12. They criticized him because he didn't come up, you know. And many times, Cricket, it's not the fact that folks think less of you. They want you to think less of yourself. <laughs> you ever had folks to come to you to uh, tell other folks, to my, she thinks she did. No, I know you think. You. And, and, and if you're not in the right place, uh, Mimi, you'll find yourself running behind the folks trying to explain. Explain. Everybody can't say this, but them 2021, look at somebody and tell them, I ain't explaining nothing else. I didn't say explain, I said explain. I ain't explaining. I'm not, I ain't not. Talk to you. If you didn't catch me in 2020, you ain't got no, you don't have no explanation coming. Take it like you want to. Thank you, Jesus. He says here, what, what do I say, Romans 8? Okay. Romans 8. Give me the scripture, that way it says, for we know not for, okay, we know not for it. Then the Spirit himself make it intercession for us. Okay, Romans 8 and 26, you there? I might need to back up and, and, and take a run and start. Let me look. I'm almost through, y'all. You... Look what the Bible says, uh, Romans 8.26. He says, likewise, I got five minutes, I may not take off. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, my weaknesses. You, you, you see, a part of the problem with our white brothers, and not to say, all these folks that's as foolish as they are, they, it's not because they're not saved, y'all. It's very few people that are getting good teaching. Okay? And so if you think that you are where you are because of who, who you are and because of your efforts, then quite naturally, you're going to look down on folks that don't have what you have. You see? And so all these old... Trumpish ideas they have, and where how they want to uh, uh, these old racist ideas that the so-called Christians got. This is all of it's not because they're not saved, y'all. It's they don't have good teaching. But when you are led by the Spirit, and, and and you understand that what you have is not because of you, but it's because of the goodness of God. You see, if you're not a colored person. You don't understand what colored folk go through. Walk in my shoes one day. The privilege that you have that you can take guns and walk up in the United States Capitol and not get shot down like a dog. And the police will say, I don't care. The police will take selfies with you. The Bible says that the spirit, and that's the reason I can't go on what I know. Because now we can sit up and condemn them. <laughs> but you, with your sanctified self, you want to sit up and condemn a gay person. You want to send them to hell in a handbasket. You said they don't deserve the same consideration that you get. You say it's okay to step up your nose uh, and to look down on them because they gay. But have you ever walked a mile in their shoes? Who would actually choose to be ridiculed, to be looked upon, to be spat on, to be beat up, to be killed because of their sexual preference? Did you really choose to be heterosexual? I was a little boy, four or five years old, down there in black and white TV in Elaine, Arkansas. 
and I seen them pretty white women going across the screen and everything. I, I, I ain't, ain't nobody taught me nothing. I'm up there, she up on the screen trying to kiss the screen. I wasn't trying to kiss no boy. That was just in me. Well, suppose the other thing had been in me. I didn't choose that. And that's why what you know will help you. And us that are fortunate, God brought us to a place. See, there ain't a few folk that know it. It's a few of us, God took us to a place where we understood what I know will help me. I need you to lead me and to guide me. I only got about two minutes, one, two minutes. Let me read this and I'll be through. It's a good sermon though, y'all. He says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. I don't even know what I should be praying for. Now this is the new creation. This ain't, this ain't, this ain't the, uh, up under the law. Up under the law, Jesus, ta uh, the disciples as Jesus said, teach us how to pray. And he taught them how to pray up under the law. Our Father which art in heaven. Uh, if, I, if, they, if I don't forgive them, then God ain't gonna forgive me. That, that's not what I'm up. I'm not up under that. I, I, I'm not going to hell because I don't forgive you. I say I forgive you and really I ain't forgave you. <laughs> I'm forgiven strictly on the basis of what God did in Christ by reconciling me back unto him, his shed blood. We know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit, the King James says itself, but it's better rendered himself, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Last verse, and he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh his intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Clap your hands for the Lord. Thank you so much.